What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to take a look at DuckDB. We're going to learn about what it is, when to use it, and how much faster it is compared to Pandas. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a look at DuckDB in this video today. Now, DuckDB is a very fast, minimal, in-process OLAP database management system. Now, this is a huge term, so let's break it down. I think you know what a database management system is, something like MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, or DuckDB. Um, you also know what very fast and minimal means, but what about in-process and OLAP? Now, in-process basically means that the database is running in the same process as the application that uses the database. It's not running on a server that you have to connect to like Postgres or MySQL. It's running in the same process like SQLite, for example. And OLAP is an acronym that stands for Online Analytical Processing, um, so OLAP. And then you also have OLTP, which is Online Transaction Processing. OLTP databases are focused on rows and transactions, whereas OLAP or OLAP databases are focused on features, columns, and data analytics. So DuckDB is a very fast in-process uh, database that focus, uh, focuses on data analytics. It's not so much a replacement for Postgres or MySQL. It's more like a replacement for Pandas if you want to replace anything, uh, maybe for SQLite or maybe for something like Redshift. And the main reason to use DuckDB is performance when it comes to large data sets um, and the, uh, the syntax that you can use. So you can use SQL or SQL, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, rather than some API like Pandas or some, some function calling. Uh, where you have to learn how to use a package like Pandas or Polar. So you can use SQL, and if you prefer that syntax or you're working with very large data sets, this might be something that you want to consider. So we're going to install it first by opening up a command line. I'm going to say pip or pip3 install, and then duckdb. And also you want to install Pandas as a comparison for this video today. So install these two packages, and then we can open up a new Python file, main.py. And here now we're going to learn how to use DuckDB a little bit. And then we're going to do a speed comparison in the second part of the video, where I'm going to show you how much faster DuckDB actually works on large data sets compared to pandas. Now, what I have here is I already have a CSV file with some basic data here. I have ID, name, age, job, Mike, Anna, Bob, Jane, John, Alex, Chris, Maria, with the respective jobs and ages here. This is just some sample data I want to use here for DuckDB. And I also have the same data as a parquet file. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to say import DuckDB and also import pandas as PD. And um, DuckDB works very similar to SQLite when it comes to the syntax. So actually, what you could do is you could open up a SQLite connection here to a database, and then you could replace SQLite with DuckDB and the code would stay exactly the same. So you could say something like connection is equal to SQLite 3, connect, and then some database dot db, so some db dot db. And then you could say cursor is equal to connection and dot cursor. And then you could say cursor dot execute. And then you have a simple create table if not exists person and then uh, something like ID int name text. And uh, then you could also have an insert statement, something like insert into person ID name values one and then Mike just as an example here and then you could say connection dot commit and then connection dot close and probably also cursor dot close and that is how you would do that in SQLite. Then you have your database, you can connect to it, you can get all the entries, you can do the exact same thing with DuckDB. So I can delete this, I can replace SQLite here uh, with DuckDB, and the code stays the same. I can run this again. And now I have a database again, uh, which is in the DuckDB format. So I cannot open it in SQLite, but I have a DuckDB database. So the syntax here can be exactly the same. Now you can also use the connection directly, you can also use DuckDB directly, and you can also use an, uh, an SQL command. So you can actually say DuckDB.SQL instead of doing connection and then connection execute, you can just uh, use DuckDB SQL, or you can use connection.SQL as well. So let's go ahead and look at something that is actually um, 
new or different compared to SQLite and also different compared to Pandas. What we can do with DuckDB is we can easily query CSV files or Parquet files or JSON files. So what we can do is we can say DuckDB, either we can use the read CSV function, which is similar to Pandas. So I can go and say my data CSV, I can print that and this works. But I can also go ahead and start with a query right away. So I can say DuckDB SQL, and then I can define the following query, select everything from my data.csv. I can treat it like a table. Uh, the only thing I need to do is I need to put it in quotations here. But besides that, I can just say this and it loads the data set from the CSV file. I can also start with filtering right away. I can say where age is above, uh, let's say above 40. In this case, I only get the rows where the age is above 40. So this is something that you cannot do with SQLite. This is something that you cannot do, at least not with SQL syntax in pandas. And um, I can also do the same thing here with a parquet file. And I think it's not exactly the same data set, which is why we get different rows, because I think I exported this one as a parquet file. And then I added some rows here, which is why we don't get exactly the same result. But you can provide a lot of different um, sources here, and it works right out of the box. And the coolest thing is it's even compatible with pandas and polar. So I can go ahead and say data frame is equal to pandas dot read CSV. I can load my data dot CSV here as a pandas data frame. And then all I have to do to query this pandas data frame is I have to just say select everything from df. So from the variable name here. And there you go this works as well. This is already super impressive and super convenient. Uh, the next thing is instead of printing this, I can store this as a result, I can say result is equal to duckdb.sql and then the query and then I can get the result in different formats, I can say result fetch all which is what we also do with SQLite. So fetch all will give me Python objects. Uh, so we have these uh, tuples here with four elements or four values per tuple. Um, but then I can also do result.df to get a pandas data frame, or I can do result.pl to get a polar data frame, or I can do result.fetch uh, numpy, for example, to get, or can I also do just numpy? I'm not sure. No, fetch numpy uh, to get the numpy format. So I get the same data in different formats here, depending on what function I provide here. This is also super convenient, super impressive. Um, now I can also just create tables in the database uh, directly from CSV files. How would I do that? I would just say connection is equal to uh, duckdb dot connect, I would connect to some or actually let's, let's delete this first, some db dot usually you go with ddb here for duckdb. Uh, but then you can just go and say connection SQL and then um, create table if not exists, exists, uh, people as select everything from and then you provide again, my data dot CSV. So you're creating a table if it doesn't exist as select from CSV file or data frame or whatever you have, and then connection, commit, connection, close, run this, then comment this out and then say print connection, execute, uh, select everything from people, fetch all. And what you get as a result is you get the data from the database. So you can do that easily. You can also do the same thing uh, with a pandas data frame even easier, I think. So you can say read CSV, my data CSV, and then uh, what we can do here is we can use the function connection dot register. And I can just provide a table name people, let's delete this first. Um, I can register the table people based on a data frame. This is what I have to do in order to get the data frame and turn it into a table people. And then I can do the same thing connection execute, select everything from people. And then I get uh, fetch all here print this. There you go. This also works. Um, yeah, and then maybe as a last thing before we go to the speed comparison, I want to show you 
uh, why this can be convenient. As I said, one of the major reasons is not just the speed, but also the convenience if you like SQL or SQL more than the pandas API, a lot of people are very comfortable writing SQL code, they don't like uh, messing around with pandas functions and apply and lambda expressions and something like this. And in this case, you can formulate quite complex queries. So I'm going to copy paste this one here, I don't want to um, write it here now in the video to not waste time. But basically, uh, you can do it like this. So you connect to a database, uh, and you have a query like this. So uh, actually, for this, I would have to have this already in the database. So let's actually go and say connection dot SQL. And let's say, create table, people, is it people? Yeah, uh, from, or actually create table people, what was the syntax as select everything from my data CSV the thing we just learned about. And then you have this complex query where basically we're filtering the data, we're saying that we want to group by job. So I want to take all the people off a certain job, uh, if they are above the age of 25. For each job where the people or for each job, we get the average age of the people that are above the age of 25. Then we also count how many people are doing this job. So these are two separate queries here. And then based on these two separate queries, what we do is we say, select the job, the average age and the amount of people that have this job, uh, by joining these two uh, sub selects here, or yeah, these two sub selects here, and saying we want to only display jobs that have at least two people uh, active in that job, and we then want to order them by average age. So this is done here with manager and with programmer, we have four people managers, two people programmers, if we look at the data set, four managers, two people are programmers, one designer, one clerk. Um, and this is uh, super interesting. So this is how you can do that in uh, DuckDB syntax or in SQL syntax, you don't have to use the pandas API if you don't want to some people are just more comfortable doing it like this, because this is what they're used to. Uh, and also, it can have a lot of uh, benefits if you then want to use something like BigQuery or Redshift or any database um, based solution, this can be more useful to be able to do it like this. Um, so what I want to show you next is the speed comparison, I have prepared a couple of files here, uh, three separate speed comparisons, I'm going to copy paste them here to show you how much faster DuckDB is um, compared to pandas. So let me just copy paste this here. Uh, the basic example is here we have 10 to the power of eight uh, data rows where we have a being a random variable, b being a, a random variable, c being a random variable between zero and 100. Uh, and then we have a choice here either x, y, z. So just some sample data doesn't really matter. And what we're doing here is we're doing a very simple query where we say, give me all the rows where the c column has a value above 50. And from this give me the mean of the a column. This is what we're doing here as a simple query. Uh, this is how it's done in pandas data frame, where the data frame column C is above 50, get the column A, calculate the mean, this is the result. In DuckDB, we say select average A from DF where C is above 50. So it's the same logic, it's the same result as we're going to see here. Um, but the time is going to make a difference. Now a lot of time will be first invested in creating the data frame. So this uh, takes some time, but we're not going to measure this we're only going to measure the parts afterwards. But after some time here, we should see that there you go. Pandas took 2.18 seconds, DuckDB took 0.08 seconds. So DuckDB in this particular case right now is 25.15% uh, not not percent times faster than pandas. So it's 25 times faster than pandas, it's the exact same result. Um, if you ignore the floating point arithmetic errors here, which uh, exist for other reasons. But the result is basically the same. And we're getting a performance increase of 25. So 25 times faster than pandas. If I run this again, maybe we're going to um, even see a better speed up, I'm going to uncomment this. So I have a CSV file here uh, for the second speed comparison script. Uh, but this is already a massive speed up. Now for the second script, we're going to do the same query, but we're going to load it directly from the CSV file. So uh, while this is running here, let me or actually, let's just wait for this to finish. And then we're going to replace this. Uh, this takes some time now. 
takes longer than before, for whatever reason, probably because I'm writing it into a file. Um, but we're going to see the speed comparison, we're going to also compare the speed in terms of loading the file doing the same query. And then we're going to do a third comparison with a complex query. So let's maybe go ahead and create a new Python file here, main two. This is going to be the second speed comparison in pandas, we read the CSV file, we do the same query or the same filtering, and then we get the result. And for docdb, we get the data set here in the select average from data set where c is above 50. And that is going to be the comparison here. So what we're doing here is we're doing the same thing, but we're saving the file, uh, or we're saving the data to a file. And here we're loading it directly from the file. Alright, so I had to cut the video because it took quite some time. Uh, this is not included, of course, in the performance uh, comparison here because it was just saving the file. But in this case here now 33 times faster. So even faster than before 2.5 seconds here for pandas 0.07 for DuckDB. Now we have the data set exported as a CSV file. So we can run main 2.py and see what the performance difference is when first loading the file, then doing the query, in this case, again, select average from large data set CSV. Alright, so here pandas takes 36.94 seconds and DuckDB takes 3.77 seconds. Now in relative terms, so it's just 9.79 uh, times faster than pandas in relative terms, this is now less, less faster, if you want to call it that. But in absolute terms, 33 seconds difference is much more important, I think so DuckDB here performs much better. And finally, let us take a look at this example here. Uh, we have a more complicated query, it's described here filter rows in data frame one where C is greater than 50 as before, then we group the filtered data by column D and calculate the mean of column A and the sum of column B, we're just doing some random operations here. Uh, we're joining the results with a second data frame on column D um, to include column E. So we have this extra data column here, and we're joining on this column. And then we calculate the final result as the sum of the mean of A and E. So that is how you do all of this in pandas, you group by D, or actually, first of all, we filter, we group by D, we aggregate here with mean, we sum up B with a sum function, uh, then we merge on the D column, and then we calculate here the sum uh, of the mean of A and E. And here we do the same thing now as a SQL query, we select average and sum, we join here. So some people just like to do it like this, they prefer this over something like this. And let's see what the performance difference is here. So it's not just maybe more convenient to write it like this, but it's also faster. And there you go, we can see that the time taken for pandas is 3.09 seconds. For DuckDB, it's 0.37 seconds. So DuckDB in this case is 8.23 times faster than pandas. So you can see it's not always necessarily 30 times faster It's not always necessarily uh, 100 times faster. Sometimes it's just eight times faster in different use cases, maybe it's just three times faster, it doesn't matter. When you work with large data sets, DuckDB usually is faster and has better performance. It's also more convenient for a lot of people to work with an SQL syntax rather than an API like pandas. And overall, it's just a better choice if you're working with large data sets uh, and doing data analytics. Pandas is still better if you want to do data exploration, if you want to have a good support from different Python packages, a good seamless integration uh, with other libraries and packages. Um, and when you just want to do some basic data exploration on small or medium sized data sets, DuckDB is better if you prefer SQL, if you have large data sets, um, if you want to use concurrency, and if you want to complex, uh, if you want to formulate complex queries, uh, like this, or 10 times more complex queries in SQL like language. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.